Hi Stitchers, I'm here today with another update video for you all. I know it's mid-March, um, this is my February update video and yeah, it's a couple of weeks late but life has got in the way. As you all know that happens. Um, you're all under time constrictions as I am and sometimes it's just not easy to get these videos out uh, when they're planned in my mind. But today I'm going to show you my whips for February and my three finishes and my one FFO. I also have a couple of beautiful racks to show you and uh, my March plans. What I have planned to start and hopefully some finishes planned for March. So let's get started. Okay so my first whip for February, um, which is also my first finish, is my Santa's Village series from Country Cottage Needleworks. And I'm doing this as a stitch along with the Santa's Village Sale Facebook group. And it's like last time, it's still on my um, frame because it's just easier for me because it's on the biggest frame, so I have no need to take it off. Now don't laugh, I had to do something because I've already finished marches and I don't want to show you my march progress yet. So I came up with an idea. <laughs> I've covered up march so you can't see it. So here we are so far. January is Santa's house and February is Poinsettia Place. Getting a bit closer. I love this series. It's just so much fun to stitch. I love the fabric that I'm doing, which is 32 count opalescent Belfast linen. Nice and sparkly, although it doesn't really show on camera. Um, I'm having an issue because I bought the buttons for this series. I really, really wanted to put on the buttons. And when I stitched Santa's house, you might recall me saying that I forgot that the, uh, with the button, no, sorry, it wasn't that one. I left off where the button's going to go, which is a star above the tree. So that's all ready to go on. When I got to Poinsettia Place, I accidentally stitched the bird, which is supposed to have the button right there. And I put the photo up on Facebook, on Instagram, and so many of you said, oh, I love the bird, leave the bird. It looks much better stitched. So I'm in two minds now as to whether to unstitch it and put the button on. Or we'll do something else, put the button somewhere else on the design. I've got a couple of ideas in mind. But at this stage, I don't know. I, I can't decide. I hate being liberal. So anyway, that's my first finish for February. And uh, so far, yeah, just loving it. My next whip is my Wizard of Oz series by Brooks Books. And this is a stitch along with... Um, Stitch Mania for Brooks Books Year Long Sal. And I've done the same thing on this one because I've stitched March, which I don't want you to see. So there's fabric up there. So February was the Scarecrow. How amazing does he look with that straw? I love that attention to detail. The straw is done in different colours and it just looks so lifelike. I love that. So again, this is on the same fabric as Santa's Village, 32 count opalescent Belfast linen. And for those of you um, that haven't heard yet, the Brooks Books charts were charted for DMC light effects. And I don't like stitching with them. That's my own personal choice. So I swapped the colours out for the Petite Treasure Braid. And I'm loving it. I'm using two strands. wasn't sure whether to use one or two. Um, but I just decided that I wanted the extra bling, so I'm using two strands. There's actually no metallic in the scarecrow. No, the only metallic was in the, the brick down the bottom. But wait till you see March, because that's pretty much all metallic. But anyway, you have to wait another month. Well, no, no you don't. You have to wait another two weeks for that one. So, loving that so far. And for anyone that's wondering, um, I do manage to get the Santa's Village series and the Oz um, series done within the first week of the month. 
uh, on average it takes me roughly around 15 hours to stitch one of the Santa's Village um, blocks and it takes me about 10 hours to do one of the Oz blocks and that's really reasonable um, I know we all have different stitching speeds and everyone keeps saying how fast I am but um, that's I just wanted to put those times out there for anyone that was considering doing the series but didn't know how long it would take or wanted to somehow work it into their rotation but, but weren't sure. So just to give you an idea, so 15 hours for the Santa's Village and 10 hours for the for the Oz. Now my week two whip was Mirabilia Roses of Provence and I didn't get to work on her at all in February. Unfortunately I fell really ill. I gave myself salmonella poisoning, um, raw chicken and broccoli don't mix well so I was a very sick girl, um, lost four kilos in two days, I don't recommend that as a weight loss, um, but it took me a good week to get over that, luckily it was just a meal I prepared for myself, not for the family and it was a mistake that I've never made before, will never make again. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you're rushing in the kitchen trying to prepare a 20 minute meal in five minutes. <laughs> anyway, lesson learned. Um, so sadly, poor Roses of Province didn't get to see any stitching, um, but I have started her in March, so that's good news. And my next whip is my week three whip, which is the Heaven and Earth Designs mini bar time, which is also a stitch along I'm doing with Cross Stitches Fun Group. Although um, I'm... <laughs> I've been struggling the last couple of weeks to get in the minimum 100 stitches, but hopefully I'll get back on track with that soon. I've decided just not to beat myself up over it anymore, and what I can get done, I can get done. There's no use stressing out over it. It's it's a hobby, isn't it? It's not a job. Um, yeah, so I'll insert a picture here of the last time you saw her. Okay, so now this is where I am up to. And should have given it a little bit of a press first, sorry. There she is. So at this point in time, this is 65 days progress. Obviously some of those days I only got in 100 stitches with the, the stitch along. But I'm really happy with that progress. Um, by the end of that week, I actually managed 5,485 stitches. But, you know, remember, these are 10 stitches, so they're only half the work. Um, and this is page 6 finished. So I have three more pages to go. Full pages, three full pages across there, and then three partial pages, which I think are um, maybe 300 stitches across so not a lot to go on there love how she looks this is just you know doing this part down the next bit will be um, integrating some candles which I'm really looking forward to seeing um, maybe some more new colors see how that goes now I did mention in the last video about Pam's um, technique to start to do the waste knot a waste knot to do the away knot or the waist knot and I wanted to start it but I decided to leave it where I was because I had too many part threads on the side and I just didn't want to confuse myself with starting something new so I'm hoping to start it here on this new section so that'll be something new for me and I can let you know how I will go how I go with it all um, but I'm very hopeful that it's going to be great and now that I've got over my fear of having a messy front I'm quite happy to give this new technique a try so thank you again Pam for putting up that tutorial I'm gonna put a link down um, at the bottom of this description so that any of you that missed it on the previous video that I did you can click on there and have another look so that's uh, mini bath time for February so I'm already um, this is the stage that I get to with my projects. I get about three quarters done and then I start thinking ahead, what am I gonna do next? So for me, this is my heaven and earth design. 
so she will be replaced by heaven and earth design so i have to start thinking about which one i want to do and i can't decide i have too many beautiful heaven and earth designs i'm not going to buy a new one i'm going to use something that i already have and whether it's um one of the beautiful racks that i've received or one of the previous ones that i've already bought myself i'm not sure but uh looking forward to that I've got a little while before I have to make that decision which is good now week four I had a new start which we all love new starts and I started the Lizzie Kate at our house design because I love Lizzie Kate I love quotes and this one in particular really spoke to me I'm doing this one on 32 count platinum Lugana and this is how much I got done in February just quite a bit I'll go a bit closer so that you can have a better look hopefully you could see that okay it wasn't too shaky um, look Lizzie Kate's a really quick and easy to stitch up if you've never done one before I highly recommend them they're so enjoyable as I said, really quick charts are very easy to follow. You don't have to use the hand dyed threads, you can use the DMC equivalent, they look just as nice. This one is using hand dyed. This particular um, one was actually a kit I purchased from 123 Stitch, and it came with the over dyed threads, which are all um, crescent colours. And for the price, I think it was $35. For the kit and it came with six six I think six full skeins of over dye threads so I thought that was really good value for money the chart plus all the cotton and, and you're not going to use all of that cotton either because you just generally don't with Lizzie Kate's but um, some of the colors show up more variegated than others and I have already decided how I'm going to finish this. This will be finished in March. I have purchased a bell pull. Obviously I've just got this top section to do but I've purchased a bell pull which is coming from Canada and I'm not going to say too much about it until I receive it and then I'm going to show you all and tell you where I got it all from and hopefully you'll get on board and you might like to purchase one too and help out another fellow stitcher. So I'm really looking forward to that because it's going to be a nice, easy FFO. And I don't have a lot of FFOs so far this year. And I warned you that I wouldn't. There were so many finishes and FFOs last year and I need a bit of a break from all that. Um, probably overdid it, which I normally do. But anyway, so that is the Lizzie Kate. Now, speaking of FFOs... Here is my one FFO, February, and it's my February cottage. This is my second to last one, only one more to go. But I really love this one in the pink. My favourite part was actually the love heart trees. I really enjoyed stitching them, and the doves were cute. I put a double bow on this one. You can see the pins there, but it's only for me, it's okay. And I found the perfect fabric. I have been really, really lucky. It's a bit of cotton there. Really, really lucky in finding the fabric that I want for these designs. Something that suits me, plus is the same, is the right colour for the design. So one more to go. Sad. I'm going to be sad because this has been a year of my stitching and. But they're all up behind me and I can look at them every day, which makes me happy. So that's that one. Okay, so let's talk about March plans. And that's always fun for me, talking about what I'm about to do. Um, so the first one will be my Santa's Village series. And I'll be doing going to say I'm going to be doing I've done it I've already finished it but you can't see it yet so <laughs> we'll pretend North Pole Post Office
looks a bit blurry to me. Hopefully you can see that okay. So cute little letters hanging on the postal line there. And this one has a bird on the top. So you'll have to wait and see what I've done with that one. So that's week one, part A. Week one, part B. Again, I've already done this one. But the Tin Woodman. Not the Tin Man, as in the movie. This is the book, The Tin Woodman. Which is why it looks a little bit different. I'm not even going to tell you. We're not even going to talk about how I stitched this yet. Because that's, that's cruel. We'll just have to wait. <laughs> um, Mirabilia. I'm already stitching on her. Yay! Um, missed her. Missed her so much. And I may have seriously underestimated how long it was going to take me to stitch her. Um, Claire and I have Pyrex stitches. We have... Hi Claire! <laughs> we have planned to do a lavender and lace together when I have finished my Mirabilia and I said about six months but now I, I missed a month so I'm stressing a bit so I hopefully I don't know she just she's looking so big again I can't show you yet you have to wait for the next video um I'll also be working my heaven and earth designs mini bath time I will be finishing at our house so that will be a finish for March um, I have started March Cottage, my final one. I haven't done very much. I've just done a bit of the green house and the green grass and the pink around the windows. That's all I've done. I shouldn't have told you that. And I'm going to have a new start when I finish Lizzie Kate because that's only going to take me, oh, I don't know, one or two days. my Country Cottage Needleworks seasonal celebrations. If you remember last season, I did summer. Well, in Australia, we're now in autumn. But it's still hot. Tank top weather. It's still hot. I'm over it. I know you guys are complaining about the cold and everything, but oh, I'd love that right now. I'll send some of you my heat and you can send me some of your cold. Um, so, autumn. So I'll be starting this as week four. And these don't take long to stitch. They look like a lot of stitching, but really they're not. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be finished. And uh, then I'll be looking for something else for April. And I did say I was going to be doing my gingerbread houses soon, but I haven't ordered the fabric yet. So we'll see. But the autumn... There's a couple of really nice hand dyed threads in it. Uh, Gentle Arts Harvest Moon. That's a nice colour. Oranges and yellows. And Classic Colour Works Bean Sprout. And there's not a lot of variation in there, but being as it's leaves, I'm sure it will stitch up nice and you'll be able to see it. So that's the plans for March. It's going to be busy, busy, busy. Okay, so before I show you my beautiful racks that were so kindly sent to me, I wanted to show you my couple of very small purchases I've made. I've been really, really good, which is awesome because I have to make up for the times that I'm really, really bad. And um, the reason why I'm putting this in, there's something... Um, special I want to point out with this so in case you get bored and you want to turn off at least you'll get to see this hopefully all right um, first off I purchased the world of cross stitching magazine now I haven't really bought the magazines for ages I have probably I don't know two or three hundred magazines in my cupboard and I when I bought them off a lovely lady that was selling her entire stash I said to myself, I won't ever have to buy the magazines again because there's plenty of designs in there. But, you know, when you're bored and you're at the newsagent browsing magazines and then you happen to see cottages on a magazine, you have to buy it. So this is issue number 
0.36 and I think it was January. So this is the cover and this is what I bought it for. I'll show you a better picture. Some nice designs in this magazine. But I had to have this because these are done on plastic canvas. Look at them. They are so cute. And I thought that the Gingerbread Village series that I'm going to be stitching is going to take a while to do all of them because it, they are very expensive to buy. And I don't plan on stitching them all up fast and... I don't have an endless bank account, unfortunately. But I thought these cute little ones in the plastic canvas would match in well and make the village look bigger. Uh, it was just my thinking, anyway. Um, I can't show you the charts, but I just wanted to show you. Let me cover up some bits here. This is cottage one. Look at the roof. Isn't that cute? I love that. So, yes. I've never stitched on plastic canvas before. So if anyone has any advice for me on that, please let me know. Um, assume it will be easy I'll give it a go but yeah there's all instructions in here so something new got to give new things a try don't we and then my local op shop well it's not really local but anyway um, they had some cross stitch charts so first of all there was a cross country stitching magazine now I have quite a few of these from back when I very first started stitching 20 odd years ago and I love this country style look. I really like it. I'm not an overly religious person so a lot of these have Bible quotes and things like that in there um, and I have in the past stitched one that had a Bible quote and I actually took the quote out. I'm nothing against Bible quotes but it's just, I don't know, just doesn't speak to me. So, this, this book was $2. It's got some really lovely designs, but there's one in here I wanted to point out because I know a lot of you like quilting. This is called Bits and Pieces Quilt Shop. And there it is. Isn't that lovely? Little quilt squares up the top. And I've already looked at the chart for this. And if you ever come across magazines where the chart has been, there's been a slight error in the printing and it's the colours are slightly off. So the actual chart is blurry as. So if I ever get to stitch this one, Gonna need the glasses, I think, because it's headache feel, definitely. Anyway, that was that one. It's moving right along. Now I saw these. These two folders, two dollars each, and I just have to show you what it is. Is someone has bought all these kits and obviously stitched them. But they have retained the front picture and the chart untouched and they've kept it in this folder. So there's Winnie the Pooh. There's, there's a whole variety of charts in here. Some in here I would never stitch. But some I love. Look at these Australian bookmarks. I liked those. Make a nice gift for somebody. Semco. Lions. And the little Semco one. Usilla. 
and I really liked these. This is I actually bought this folder because of the, the Bucilla. I haven't stitched a Bucilla before, but I like them. I've heard a lot of people complain about them. Not sure why. Oh, and the other, sorry, I have to get this one out. This is a lavender and lace, pretty old one. I can't show you the chart, but here is the picture. She's lovely. Her name is Winter Rose, and this is a 1988 pattern. It's only small. It's um, hundred and three stitches by hundred and thirty nine stitches. I thought she was lovely. So you know, with all these other designs for two dollars, I would have paid two dollars or more than two dollars for just the lavender and lace. Anyway, um, it's another one. Gold collections petite. So as I said, these are just the charts and the front image. But I thought that was a great idea. And you can pass it on to someone who would also like to stitch them. Now what you might say is, okay, Gold Collection, Petites, Bucilla, they use their own thread. This is the important thing that I mentioned earlier. Obviously online, if you do some Googling, you can find out the conversions. And one particular site is cyberstitches.com, which I'll link down below. They have conversions for Bucilla, the Gold Collections Petite. So it's really easy. If, if you've come across a kit like this in an op shop or wherever else and there's no thread you can easily convert it to DMC and you can stitch it yourself so I thought that was really important to mention I'll just show you this other folder as well it wasn't as much in this other one but lavender bag some seashells oh, there's a Winnie the Pooh sorry about the shine there there's a lot of Semco. This lady liked the Semco kits, which are um, Australian, I think. This little one. I had to laugh. This one here is a kitchen magnet set. And when I saw the second one, I thought, ah, I have to buy it. It's me. It's got my name on it. And it's spilt right. So I had to laugh at that. And then I really liked this. Now this is from Holland. And I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Because I can speak German a little bit. But I can't speak Holland. Um, and I'd probably stuff it up. Well, these are the babies. And even though I didn't particularly like anything else in the pack... I loved them. So for two dollars, yep, I'm having it. I like them. See myself stitching a card for someone. Um, and then there's a little carousel horse. You know I like carousels. That one was quite cute too. And that one. So for, I think you'd agree, for two dollars, Incredible value. I just have to buy my own cotton. Um, so that was it for my purchases for this month, uh, for February. I told you I was really, really good. Okay, now onto the racks. Look, I mention this every time and I, I feel the need to mention it again. I get so many messages from beautiful stitches requesting my address because they want to send me something and I think that's absolutely so beautiful but I feel so guilty because I don't feel like I deserve gifts from anyone I'm just doing what I love doing and I'm showing you all on video and you all seem to be enjoying it and I really I have so much and when I show racks on my videos I feel guilty because it feels like I 
I know you don't all feel this way, but it feels like some people might think that I'm bragging about things that people have sent me, and I don't feel like that at all. I like to show you the gifts because other than replying to someone with a text message or an email to say thank you so much for your beautiful gift, that's a very impersonal way of thanking someone. And I can't ring people because obviously they're overseas and I can't visit them. Um, so by saying thank you on a video, hopefully they can see exactly how grateful I am and how incredibly blessed I feel to receive such beautiful presents and, and even just the thought, just the thought of people wanting to send me something, it blows me away, it really does and yeah, I just, as I said, I get so many requests and I really don't know how to respond. I'm not someone that says, yeah, sure, here's my address, please send me something. I don't feel like that and it, I actually feel quite uncomfortable. I think I have mentioned this before and I'm sorry to dwell on it again, but there are so many stitches out there that are doing videos now that may never have received anything and I feel for them because I don't want them to see me continually getting gifts and them not getting anything and I feel sad about that. So, on a brighter note, my beautiful friend Morgan, who lives in Florida and who is from France, sent me a beautiful message thanking me for my videos and wanting to send me a special book. And I'll just show you what she sent. So, here's a beautiful postcard and a lovely message on the back. And I've been to Florida. I love Florida. So in the parcel, there were a couple of packets of Bowen needles, which I use, so I appreciate them very much, size 20 and size 18. And these wonderful things, okay, there's four of them. Now, if you guys have never seen these before, and don't know what they're for, these are great. for putting your bobbins on for your projects so if you want to keep if you don't you know maybe you're doing a smaller project and you don't want to worry about keeping them in a box or you want something that's easier to travel with these are awesome and up until now I only had one and I had no idea where I got it from I'm not sure if someone sent it to me or if my husband just had it laying around in the garage um, and I did ask Claire Pyrex Stitches where she got hers from and she mentioned eBay but they were a bulk purchase and I really didn't, I only wanted one or two more and Morgan read my mind and she sent me these so thank you so much. They're going to come in very handy. Love these things. This is what she mentioned to me that she was going to send me and it is the most gorgeous book and it's all in French, which I can't speak, but it's stitching and you don't need to read it. Let's face it. Once you can stitch, I mean, there's no, I, well, I don't think there's specialty stitches in there, but I can always look up specialty stitches in English. So as I said, all the writing is in French. And I just want to show you the projects in this gorgeous book. I can't tell you what they're called because I can't pronounce French either. But I know this one says cupcake. They are beautiful. This is a beautiful book to add to my collection. I love birds as well. I love this design. Aren't they gorgeous? Just so lifelike. And there's quite a few designs in here. But if I get stuck 
my mum's friend, Rita, she speaks French. And she lives about a 10 minute drive from my house. So I can always go over there and ask her for a translation. But I'm sure my best friend Google will be able to help out too. Who doesn't love Google? Google knows everything, right? that all the different birds if you're a bird lover this book is unreal so many designs I'm getting this around look at that oh. and this book is in new condition I can't remember if Morgan said she stitched anything from it, but if you have Morgan, please let me know because I'd be very interested to hear. Look at this one. Amazing. Just amazing. Still going. <laughs> I haven't got to my favourite one yet. Quite a few. Here we go. I love this one. I love it. It's, this is the first one that caught my eye. And I think it's because of the variation in the colours in the feather. It just drew me in. So lifelike. I have no idea what that says next to it. I have to look that up. And this. Look at this. It's all white stitching, which I hate. But with a trolley needle, it's not so bad. That is amazing. So that's the designs and then all the charts are at the back. And they are a mixture of solid colours and colours with patterns in them. But unlike some companies, there seems to be enough difference in the colours that you don't get mixed up. So quite easy to follow from what I can gather and obviously the instructions um, aren't going to be any use to me and I am assuming that these colours in the charts are DMC because I can't find where it would say otherwise but even the finishing it shows you how to finish off the techniques um, there's some diagrams there which are very helpful. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce the author, but there's her name there. If anyone is interested in that book. It's hardcover, absolutely gorgeous. Now, if that wasn't enough, shortly afterwards, I then received another gift in the mail from Morgan, which I wasn't expecting. You can understand my absolute shock when I opened up the post box and saw this and I was what on earth is that it is a hand stitched envelope that Morgan has made I've got this fabric on it to cover up my address everything is stitched so my name my address this gorgeous butterfly with the gold it had a sticker on here the postal sticker where it was from I'm just going to show you the back and I'm going to cover up Morgan's address so this is the back and we have another gorgeous bird look at the colors and the yin, yin yang symbol and look at this opens up Velcro and a postcard so it's a postcard envelope or envelope however you want to pronounce it it's all fully lined what an amazingly talented lady now Morgan told me that in France this is a common way to exchange gifts to each other 
and the rule is it has to be sent as a letter so you're not allowed to put it in a in another envelope it has to be sent like this so oops I'm going to show her address so you can imagine it did arrive a little bit grubby so I've washed it I checked with Morgan first she, she used all DMC so I gave it a bit of a wash and it did come up much better and um, just absolutely blown away would never have thought of creating an envelope and then stitching it all incredible so thank you so much Morgan for a really really thoughtful gift the book from France and a gift that to me speaks volumes absolutely incredible so thank you and I received another gift this month from my beautiful friend Valerie and a few of you watch Val's um, YouTube videos I need to work in time and Val and I speak quite often by email well she contacts me more quickly than I reply <laughs> anyone that has emailed me knows that I'm quite slow at replying um, and we've been chatting for quite some time and Val used to do cross stitch and she can no longer because her eyesight won't let her so she now does needlepoint which is absolutely stunning and if you haven't seen it you must go check out her channel and I will put a link to her channel down below anyway she had said to me that she had some DMC that she wasn't using anymore and she would like to send it to me and I said well only if I can send you something so I sent her off a parcel and I received this big box all the way from USA and she had said it was just something small it's funny how people say that they lie <laughs> okay so what I received is incredible Sorry for the noise. So Valerie has sent me not just her DMC, but the containers that she's kept them in, which are all beautifully packed. There are a ton of variegated DMC. We're not just talking stock standard colors here we're talking a ton of them the majority of which have been labeled just like I do with the number my camera's a bit blurry today Not sure what's going on there it's focusing on something other than what I want it to uh, this particular box also has the DMC metallics so there's three of those two gold and a silver very handy for my cards so that's box one box two and these are DMC boxes I haven't got DMC boxes I've just got uh, boring spotlight plain brand boxes so these are gorgeous there's some interesting this is silk there's a silk thread in there actually there's there's a few silk colors in there i'll have to ask valerie what they are and there's some pearl and lots more variegated and then a third box with some more colors and some spare bobbins which we all need them, don't we? They're always handy to have. If you ever want to give someone a cross stitch gift, give them some bobbins. Well, that's if they use them. And then there's this bag, which is full of floss away bags. Oh, there's so many here, I'm going to drop them. And then a whole heap of full skeins. 
some pearl, some metallic, a gorgeous bookmark, all ready to, to be stitched. And I love this, this tray that it's all sitting in. It's made from leather. And it's gorgeous. You could use this as a um, an ought tray or a little travel thing or just to hold stuff. Love that. And then, because, you know, by this point I was blown away, as you would be, because it's just colours and beautiful colours and you start thinking, wow, these people are sending me these beautiful gifts. Just don't get it. Valerie had, oh, hang on, there's two things. Sorry, missed this one. This one is a scissor fob. And I haven't got a scissor fob. Now I do. Look at it. It's gorgeous. So I can put my scissors on the end there. It's a little clasp, so I won't lose my scissors. And it's a Christmas tree. That's beautiful. And then Valerie mentioned that she wanted to send me something that was locally made. And I'm assuming this is it. And this actually made me cry. Because this was the last thing I saw. Excuse me. This was the last thing I saw in the box. And by this time I was already overwhelmed. But I think you'll agree when you see this. That this is stunning. So these are a set of mermaid measuring spoons. I'll show you the biggest one there. Absolutely stunning. Here's the back. And I can tell you that these will never get used in my kitchen. Never. They are way too special. I I would die if they got tarnished or damaged. Look at the look at the colours in that. I looked at these for a good half an hour and I cried. And I said to myself, people are too kind to me. That is just beautiful. So thank you once again, Val. I know I have emailed you and messaged you, but too much, too much. And really, really appreciate your generosity. So at that point, I'm going to leave that there. Um, I would like to thank everyone for subscribing, for commenting, for liking. For anyone that commented on my previous video in January that hasn't received a reply yet, you will get one. I'm still trying to catch up on that side of things. And I do always reply to everybody. So um, I think I'm about four weeks or so behind in the replying. And once this video goes up, I'm going to have a whole heap more to reply to. So I need to spend a couple of days, I think, at the computer just replying to everybody. But thank you all again for your support, your lovely comments. Everyone on Instagram that is always so um, lovely with their, their comments on there and, you know, inspiring words and helpful advice and everything. Love this community so much. Love everyone in it. And I wish you all a very happy stitching March. Once again, sorry this is a bit late, but you know, life, life gets in the way. And uh, I will be back in a couple of weeks. And already started planning a few extra videos, so let's hope that they get done. So thanks again everyone, and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.